time for another five minutes. Joining me now is Mike Villamore. Mike, good to see you. How you doing? I'm doing great, Eric. Thanks for having me on, and uh, I'm excited to, to chat a little uh, San Francisco 49ers today. Yeah, I think we can uh, tell by our attire that that was going to be the topic, so no need for an introduction there. Let's get right into it. We'll put five minutes on the clock. State of the 49ers. We were talking just before we went uh, into record mode here about the Super Bowl and how devastating it was, but we did make some good strides. I'm going to say we, everyone's going to have to deal with it, uh, that we made some good strides to get to the Super Bowl. Draft was, was okay in my opinion. We'll talk about that in a minute, but what are your thoughts about the team as we stand right now? I mean, if you're a 49er fan, you believe wholeheartedly that they should have won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Um the, the key play, of course, was the third, and I believe it was 17 or 18 um, when uh, Mahomes hit that, that big pass to Tyreek Hill. There was, in my mind, definite holding on that play on Nick Bosa by the left tackle. And uh, if, if you look at the replay, he, he was going to get sacked. Mahomes was going to go down, and the referee was standing right there it was a broken play. I mean, I don't know how much time Mahomes ended up having. An hour and a half by my count. Pretty much. Yeah. And so he completed it, and that changed the entire complexion of the game. And, of course, the Niners had a chance to still win the game, and people can argue that. But, really, that did change the entire complexion. So, you know, looking at the draft, they didn't get a cornerback in the draft. They didn't go out into free agency to get a cornerback. And I think – they made that decision based on the fact that really the D line dominated that game. Mm -hmm. Can't say that your, your DBs aren't good enough when they get beat on a broken play that anybody probably could have given up given the amount of time that Mahomes had to throw that ball. Yeah, true. And I, I think you bring up a good point as far as the defensive backs are concerned. When I look at the draft uh, that was just recently had, I gave San Francisco somewhere between the A- minus and B-plus range, and the reason for me was that they didn't touch a defensive back. Uh, I know they were number two in the NFL last year in pass yards allowed. They were number one in the NFC. But that goes to your point that that's a lot attributed to the defensive line because sacks do count as passing yards, <laughs> and we had a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish they would have taken a defensive back. They didn't. They went wide receiver uh, in two spots, of course, uh, getting Ayuk at number 25 after some trades from Arizona State, which I think will help. The two points you made right there, uh, one was missing out defensively on a defensive back. And then I think on the offensive side of the ball, wide receiver was a spot we needed to improve on. The other big play was the overthrow to Emmanuel Sanders, who is now with the New Orleans Saints. Uh, but addressing the wide receiver position as well, I think is what boosted me up closer to the A- minus spot. But yeah. not getting a defensive back, I think, I think is something that needed to be addressed. Yeah, and I, you know, I think if you look back too at the at the game when when the 49ers were st I think had gotten behind, and it was that last drive where Garoppolo overthrew Sanders. I mean, that was a touchdown. Yep. And whether or not Sanders wasn't fast enough to reach to catch up to the ball, or whether or not you want to claim that Garoppolo doesn't have enough of a touch um, on a throw like that. Joe Montana or Steve Young probably connect that pass. You're, you're right. I think Garoppolo, it's obviously the biggest stage he's ever played on. And it's only his, really his first full season where he went yeah. start to finish. So th that'll get sharpened up. I, I don't have a ton of worry about that. The organization might, of course, they keep commenting on how they were good looking at Tom Brady and thinking, of, thinking about going that right. way. Uh, the other interesting part to me was in the draft where the Niners traded up to get Ayuk. They were scared the Packers were going to take Ayuk at 26. So they moved up to 25 to get him. And then Green Bay goes and takes Jordan Love, which as 49er fans, we know Love is definitely going to beat us in the NFC Championship game now just because we did all that. That's just how karma seems to work for us nowadays. It's, it's well, not I, the 80s and 90s anymore. <laughs> I think, you know, not to get too far off track, but I think Aaron Rodgers has kind of played himself out of town there in Green Bay. I don't yeah. – I, I can imagine that he kind of like Brett Favre did – will play the final years of his career somewhere else eventually. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you're right. We're down to our final 20 seconds here. What's your quick outlook on 
Uh, well, if it gets played, the new season, how do we do? I, I think that the, at the end of the day, they addressed their needs with Javon Kinlaw replacing DeForest Buckner. They were, they addressed the left tackle with Trent Williams replacing Joe Staley retired, and they replaced Manuel Sanders with Brandon Ayuk, who like Debo Samuel, like George Kittle, those guys are loads to bring down. The amount of yak or yards after catch is going to be crazy this year. How are you going to defend this team? How are you going to stop them from scoring? So I'm excited. I am too. I can't wait to see it. We went about 11 seconds over, but it's okay because we're talking Niners, and that's what we care about most. That's what matters. Thanks, Mike, for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you, Eric. Take care.